In this video, we're going to be taking this pumpkin and we're going to be making that jack-o'-lantern. Let's go. All right, what's up, y'all? Uh, it's been a while, long time no see. Uh, I hope you're staying safe during this quarantine and during these bizarre times. I hope you're staying positive and productive. So in this video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, I like to make stuff around this time of year, you know, just the monster season is inspirational. And uh, this time I wanted to start off the month by doing something a little bit simpler and something that we could do together. So I made these pumpkin base meshes and I thought, let's do a little bit of a challenge, kind of a pumpkin sculpting contest for funsies. And uh, I'm doing it through my Discord server, which I started a little bit ago. We got a little fledgling community over there. So if you're into 3D nerd stuff, go down there and check it out. And if you wanna join the little contest we got going on, then go in there and download these pumpkins and make a jack o lantern yourself. So that's what this video is about. We're gonna take one of those base meshes and we're gonna make a fun little jack o lantern it's a quick, easy project that I think is a good thing to do if you're looking for a prompt or something to make in ZBrush. So I recorded myself making this jack-o'-lantern the other night, and that's what this video is about. We're gonna go over kind of the basic approach on how you can take a pumpkin model and turn it into a jack-o'-lantern shape. So I think there's a ton of different creative things you could do with this, not only jack-o'-lantern type shapes, but you can even do like sculptures on it, like uh, Andy Bergholz and his amazing pumpkin sculptures. So this is how you take a pumpkin and you make a jack-o'-lantern in ZBrush. All right, so getting started here, um, starting out with the pumpkin mesh, I'm choosing the little guy. I'm basing this off of a design from Paul Richards, kind of loose, you know? I just always liked his shapes uh, and he makes these like badass looking pumpkins, so. I just picked one that I thought the face looked kind of cool. These like small beady eyes and stuff and this uh, jagged teethy smile. So the technique that I wanted to show something that you could do for your own jack-o'-lanterns, you could do this for like any jack-o'-lantern shape really to get the cutout really is first you see me painting the mask, paint mask using holding down control and painting in and out. That gives me full control over the shapes that I want to cut out. And so I'm just putting in the jack-o'-lantern shape. So it's actually really cool. It's like similar to if you were doing a real jack-o'-lantern, you know, you draw that shape on there. So it's really forgiving because you can paint in and out of this mask until you're happy with it. So that's really kind of the key. You wanna spend your time here making your mask. There's gonna be some refinement later because you are gonna lose some sharp edges as you'll see like real quick here. But, uh, but that's the main idea. You wanna just spend time painting your mask, obviously have a jack-o'-lantern uh, design in mind. You know, you can look up inspiration online. Uh, you can do some classic jack o' lantern shapes here. That's it. Put the time into doing the mask. And then once you're ready, you're going to go down to polygroups and then you're going to group masked. So the whole goal of painting the mask here is to make a polygroup. Once you make that polygroup, it's going to have some little jaggies on it because that's just the nature of it because the mesh isn't perfectly straight and it's got to do some kind of interpolation between your, your feathery brush strokes. So that's how you're gonna get the jaggies. Now, the way we're gonna clean that up is we're gonna load in Lightbox. We're gonna go up there to get some extra brushes. And then we're gonna look at into the smooth brushes. And then in there, we're gonna use uh, smooth groups. So this is an awesome brush. Uh, I still remember when this debuted at a ZBrush Summit and like the whole crowd like audibly gasped because people didn't know this was in here. Uh, but this is a fantastic brush that um, you should be comfortable with because you can use it for all kinds of applications like we're about to do right now. So with smooth groups, you can see, but just by holding shift now, I can uh, start to smooth on the model and that's actually smoothing my groups. That's turning the jaggies into nice smooth lines, uh, which is what we want because we're gonna extrude this to make a shape that we're then gonna bully in out of the jack-o'-lantern. So what we can do now is duplicate the pumpkin and then I'm gonna isolate that polygroup that's all smooth now, delete everything else. Now we have to Z remesh this because the smooth groups made it look smooth, but there's still tons of geo in there that's all like, you know, compressed. So we're gonna try to simplify this um, using Z remesh. And we're gonna use a semi high number because we want the shape to be as preserved as can be. And then we're gonna use that to extrude out. So now that we have our new mesh, uh, I'm gonna inflate it away from the surface just a bit, make sure it's got some distance there because it has to be outside of the pumpkin. What we're gonna do is extrude super deep. And then we're gonna use that as a negative Boolean shape and then that'll give us our face. So another thing to keep in mind is to make the pumpkin look like it's hollow, we need to actually Boolean out the middle. So we're gonna do that by duplicating the original pumpkin again, 
and I'm gonna smooth it because it doesn't need all the, you know, the form on there. We just need to like hollow it out. And then I'm gonna negatively inflate it a bit so that it's inside the outer pumpkin, right? And essentially the gap between how small you're making it is gonna be the wall of your pumpkin. And then once we have that inner mesh, now we can hollow it out. So then in my sub tools, you can see I have my pumpkin and then I have to click the little down arrow right there to hit start. And then I'm clicking the icon that makes it a negative shape. And so I've got my two negative shapes now that are Boolean out of that pumpkin. So to see this, you have to make sure you go to the render tab and turn on live Boolean so you can see. And then boom, there we are. So now it's really cool is you can edit this shape live and like non-destructively, you know, you can just isolate the different shapes you're using to carve out anything you want and you can edit it. Um, you can make a new mesh, you know, you can easily just delete these eyes and then make some new meshes to carve out the shapes and add that as a negative shape. It's endless how many negative cutouts you can do. So this is a really cool way to make, you know, complex stuff. I love that it's dynamic and you can play around with it while looking at the pumpkin, you know? So in my case, what I'm doing is I'm just editing the smile shape a little bit. I, I don't want to go too far. You can see it causes, it causes problems if I, you know, if I'm going in, in and out of the pumpkin. The shape has to be big enough to go through the whole thing or else it's going to be weird. Uh, and I can always edit the face once I bake that in to the actual pumpkin model, you know? So I'm doing a little bit extra for my guy. I thought it would be kind of cool to blend the carving out of the shape and then also like have some facial features like there's muscles actually you know i wanted to kind of look like a, a demon pumpkin that's a little bit alive and i thought uh, again based on the paul richard sketch it'd be cool if the brow was furrowed and stuff and then i started doing the corners of the mouth and everything also trying to kind of make it make the lines of the pumpkin bow in like it's you know really compressing there all right, so once I'm happy with the overall pumpkin shape and I wanna make it its own mesh now, kind of bake in that Boolean now and make it its own mesh to finish, I go down to the Boolean tab and then I click make Boolean mesh. That'll make a new mesh in the tools palette at the top. So you can either drop that in or just start there and it's going to DynaMesh it. So from here on out, I'm just gonna be using DynaMesh. We could do some fancy reconstruction, but you know, not necessarily. This is just kind of a fun sketch. So we're just gonna keep it DynaMesh. Now that means that it's going to be pretty high poly. So make sure that you're happy with all the like big fundamental forms and stuff and that you're really only wanting to tweak like shape and start adding detail because then it doesn't matter. Then you can have it be nice and high. So now that we have that mesh, uh, clean up some edges, re DynaMesh. I have the project on as you can see at the top. That way when I DynaMesh it looks as identical as it can. I don't want it to, you know, change the way it looks. And now with the move brush, I can start pushing and pulling things around real easy. I can use the pinch brush and, uh, and I can really just sculpt. So I just, I'm just gonna sculpt more of this brow shape and get a little bit more personality in there. So I wanted to separate out the top like you would with a jack-o-lantern where the top's like cut out. So I wanted a kind of little gap there, a little bit extra detail. So it's a pretty heavy mesh now. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, um, but this is what I ended up doing. So from the top view, I went to my slice brush, which creates new poly groups. And then I chose the circle, um, you know, brush, whatever the modifier to draw a circle out. So from the top, I drew a circle out. Then I isolated that face and then I duplicated the pumpkin again. I'm always doing that if I'm gonna do something destructive. So it's good practice to do. Once it was separate, I could delete hidden. So now I just have this top plane, right? I could do auto groups to make sure I'm only grabbing this very top plane and delete everything else. Then I extruded that downwards. So now I've just got this top piece, right? And then on that top piece, I'm like smoothing stuff with brushes. Again, it's pretty high poly, but uh, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more simple on the edges and the bottom. But now I've got this thick top piece and then I can duplicate that now that I have it, inflate it a little bit and make that a new negative shape in my pumpkin. So thereby creating a new hole. And then the top piece that I made is its own separate mesh now. So now I can manipulate them independently and create that gap in between you know i can offset it uh, i can move it around and then uh and then there you go i've got a top piece of my pumpkin another little thing you can do too is you could use the move topological brush and that would only move whatever mesh that you're touching so that's another trick too sometimes i want to move the lid and the pumpkin together sometimes i just want to move one rather than the other to create that offset so that's something you could do so I also spent a little bit of time on the root at the top. Um, I use snake hook and spiral brushes. 
I just wanted to add like more personality. You know, again, I love those shapes that are in some of those Paul Richards designs. And uh, I just wanted to make something a little bit more whimsical and a little bit more, you know, fantastic. So it's not so realistic or something and get a little bit of a swoop in there. Uh, so those are, that's what I'm doing. All right, so now that I'm kind of happy with this pumpkin, I want to start setting up my render scene. So for me, to keep things simple, I'm just going to use Keyshot. You could also use Arnold or Marmoset. If you were going to do that, I would probably, if I was going to do that, I would probably decimate the pumpkin first or maybe uh, do a reconstruction so it's like less polygons and then uh, do more with textures. You could do decimating and then it would be just lighter. Um, but then every time you iterate, you have to decimate again, which isn't a big deal, but that's probably what I would do. The reason I use Keyshot is because I can just quickly slide it over there. So I threw on a pre-made material that I already had that has a little bit of translucency. That's something that I knew I wanted to do the whole time. I wanted to make essentially a skin shader on the pumpkin because pumpkins are a bit translucent. They're definitely translucent on the inside. Um, the skin is a little bit, um, but you know, we're doing something a relatively simple shader. I'm just, I'm not doing anything different from the inside or the outside. Another thing that I did for my scene is I added a, a cylinder that would be my physical light in Keyshot. So I have that in ZBrush and then I made a light material, which Keyshot does, and I assigned it. And then you can make that not visible in the camera. So that's what I did. So now I've got a light inside the pumpkin, which I knew is going to be key, right? So I knew that I was designing for this composition while I was working on it. So I kind of wanted to get it in the renderer as quickly as possible. So I'm going to slide back and forth from ZBrush a little bit, make sure like all my polygons are high, it's looking good, and my shaders are good. Keyshot kind of crashes. Uh, I mean, it crashes quite a bit for me. So I, I'm just making sure that I save and uh, making sure that the ex external render button is clicked in ZBrush so that every time I hit Shift R, it'll slide back over. So those are the main elements. Um, I'm going to do a very simple environment. I'm just going to keep it dark. I'm going to use a little HDRI editor to put a top light and some side lights. And then I just want to make sure that I've got that subsurface material and the inner light and I'm making the light real bright so I can see it all the way through the skin too. That's creating that awesome effect that makes it look a lot more rich is the light bleeding through the edges. And then also I'm adding some noise inside Keyshot. You can do this in any renderer, but I'm doing it in a 3D thing. So there's no UVs and I'm just putting a 3D texture on there to make sure that it's got higher frequency and a little bit more noise and tooth to it to help make it look more uh, believable and more uh, sharp. So I did a little bit of extra stuff too in Keyshot in one of the newer versions here, it can do volume materials and I just wanted to play around with that. And so like in the Halloween theme, I thought it'd be cool if there was some smoky stuff. So I did some Googling and I found a free VDM, which is a universal file format for volumes. You can use it in any kind of a volume renderer. You can do it in Arnold too. So I just did some quick Googling and I found uh, some clouds in some guy's pack. I'll uh, show a link right here. And I downloaded his free sample and then I loaded it into Keyshot as a volume. And then I played around with that. I made sure that it was in the right position and the right density for what I wanted uh, just to get like a more spooky, you know, composition. And then, uh, yeah, I hit render. I did a couple iterations to make sure I was happy with it. I probably went a little bit too far, to be honest with you. Like these renders took longer than the sculpt itself. My final render took like, like two hours, uh, which is pretty silly. So yeah, just don't do what I do. Or if you do, you know, just do it when you go to sleep. That's what I do. I, I hit a render and then in the morning I checked it out. Um, it takes so long for me because a couple reasons. Keyshot for me has to run on CPU. Uh, I've got a 10 core CPU, but it still just takes a little bit. Um, Keyshot's always taken a little bit long for me, to be honest. It's quick for visualizing, but doing those final renders takes a while. And then I'm using like the most time consuming materials. I'm using a translucent material and a volume material. I up the samples, you know, so there you go. But in the end, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think uh, this is a fun project that you can do in a short amount of time, like a night or two, probably one night for doing the modeling, one night for the rendering and look dev part of it. I also think it's a good project because it lets you practice some important aspects of ZBrush and making stuff. Masks, polygroups, using the smooth groups brush, uh, you're remeshing, you're using Z modeler and extruding, you're using panel loops and extruding maybe, you're using booleans and dynamesh, organic sculpting. So overall, I think it's a really cool project that can produce something that's pretty good looking in a short amount of time, you know? Just like a real jack-o'-lantern, having that light inside and playing with these face shapes 
uh, can just make cool effects. So if you end up making a jack-o'-lantern of your own, please share it in the Discord. And um, like I said at the beginning, we're gonna do sort of a pumpkin contest. I don't know if the winner is gonna get anything. I was just thinking like you just get cool points, but I do have some prints lying around. They're even kind of Halloween themed, really, if you think about it, but you know. I mean, obviously, I don't know, it's kind of some old work that I did. These are just some proofs I got a while ago. Um, they're from uh, Photonic Playground, which is uh, pretty cool. So I wanted to test out some printing. So anyways, like I say, I just have these. Maybe you want to, maybe you don't. If you don't, that's cool. I'm not saying you have to, but I could definitely send the winner one if they're interested. And, uh, and so that could be a little bit of a carrot, but ultimately, the idea and the goal of this challenge and this sort of project is just to get people involved to make something we should all be making things as often as we can i thought this would be a good little project that's definitely doable and uh, you can really get creative and produce cool results the deadline for submissions is going to be the end of october so you still have the rest of the month uh, we'll see how many people end up participating it might not be that much at all so you have a pretty good chance of winning if you're into that sort of thing but Ultimately, this should really just be about making something. So I hope that's what you do regardless. And uh, and I thought just trying to get our little community involved and motivate each other, help each other out, could be extra fuel you know, for the fire. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for sticking around and watching it. And, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.